I need to just let the people know that my favorite way to start a podcast is when Meadow says, yeah, press record. I need to tell you something. Well, it's a beauty thing. It's so I like, do you, did you ever watch Satchu on the internet? No. She made this lip liner stain. So you paint it on, let it dry, and then you peel it off. Oh, I've it, been seeing this. I did it. Okay. So I also did, every time I do my lip liner, I do like an X at the top and a line down the middle because I right. did it with like the pillow lip. I definitely would not do that with it because the line down the middle is intense yeah. now. It looks cute. Look. Oh. Oh, it is cute. I see that line down the middle. Don't do that. The line down the, the middle rest... is intense, so I'm sitting far away. But the rest is good. I love that. I feel like those were know, a it's thing. Kind of fun. Like, I don't. It, it's like, is it giving 2010? Like, when was this a thing? Because this was a thing. It definitely was. I don't remember. And now it's but back. It also, I guess, just speaking of old school lip things that were a thing. Were you a big lip venom girl in like 2006? Mm-mm. Uh, it was like the Sephora thing that stung the fuck out of your lips. It was called lip venom. And so it'd make mm. them look like you have filler. No, it was like the Two Faced remember. one. That Wasn't was that version. it? Two Faced lip? Oh, no, that's not lip venom. But it's not. No, it's not venom. It's called. Oh, okay. I should know this because I did a thing with them. Um, I can't remember, but it's like the Two Faced. I don't know. It stings, but it does. It does what it needs to do. Kind of like reinvented it. Their formula recently. Oh, good for them. Any hoozles. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. How was your hurricane? Girl, you were talking to someone from Miami. So when we heard hurricane, my mom and dad called me probably seven times yesterday to check in on me because like we really believed it was going to do something. No, it was on because my best friend Becky also just moved to Miami. She was like, their local news was like, San Diego, LA buys out the grocery stores for Hurricane Hillary. Like it was on their local news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were calling me all the time. And then there was an earthquake that happened. I didn't feel yep. it. And then there was Thank a 40% God. chance of a tornado warning or whatever, too. It was just lions yeah. and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Yes. Blessed. I don't live in a flood zone. Yeah. I turned into my mother during the hurricane. That's what happened. The rearrangement? And, like, the rearrangement. 7 p.m. hit and I had this burst of energy and I was like, do you know what I'm going to do? Rearrange shit in my apartment because every hurricane, my, my mom would rearrange everything in the house. And I've it's been meaning to, to tackle the entryway bench area. And yeah. of course I did it the minute that like Zoe decides to take a nap because obviously I made him come over during the hurricane. I was like, you think I'm... T- the power is going to go out and I'm going to be here by myself. Surviving a hurricane? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Power to not go out. You've learned that once before. Yeah, I literally had my headphones in. I was listening to my Wonder Hill playlist, which is a freaking bop and a half. Everyone go check it out. And I was doing my little thing, thinking I'm being so quiet. And I am like really in the zone, reorganizing this whole area. And I just look up and he just has his hat like slightly lifted, just like <laughs> staring at me. And I was like... <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> oh my god, Busy. I have something for him. Oh my god, wait, I have oh. just the solution. Hold on. Do you have uh earplugs for him? Okay, even better. This you also be mindful of the table because it's shaking a lot. Okay. I'll put my juice down here. My god sister Sophie turned me on to this, and my mom and I both went and got them, and it's already gonna be in my TMV Patreon favorites. Go to our Patreon because we share fun things like this. Gabby, you are gonna die. How do I? It is a headband Bluetooth speaker. This is now how I meditate in bed. It is flat to your ear. You could do your cutie little TBM and fall right asleep. It is a fucking headband Bluetooth. Is this not the most genius shit you've ever seen? Amazon, like 20 bucks. Who knew? Not me. Changed my life. Wow. Things he definitely does not need but needs. Like that. He's just going to walk around always wearing that. I'm going to link it to him immediately. Oh, wow. He'll love that. That's a really good find. My mom got a pink one. I got a black one. Great. Isn't that so cool? Oh, maybe Never I'll even with knew one. It was a You thing. know I like my ears covered. Yeah, me too. It's perfect. Wow. Guys, I know. that's a good way to tell people about our favorites. We do do fun favorites. We do. You know why? Because we are both such YouTube kids. Like I was thinking about it the other day. Like I really miss like empties videos and like what's in my mm. bag and all that stupid shit. Like I feel like we should do that on Patreon. People still do empties. Megan Ranks, shout out Megan Ranks. She always does like a good empties video or like, I think she does them on her stories and she'll just do a big dump. Like how we do like our weekend recaps. 
Yeah. She'll do like, you've done that before. I feel like I've done empties before. Yeah. Cause I think it's so mm -hmm. fun. It's like old school YouTube. I love it. It is fun. That would be fun to do on Patreon. Also, we've gotten multiple requests about bringing the boys on Patreon, but then someone else said we should do a split date night vlog. So it's like you're in Zoe's date and then me and Aaron's date. Isn't that so sweet? Look at the people giving us content ideas. Wow. So we're going to do that this month. Cute. I've decided for us. Okay. So cute. That is cute. I wonder if he'll be cool with that. I feel like he will be. I feel like if he knows going into it, like that's what it's for, yeah. he'll be fine with it. Yeah. Like Same this version of date night, we're doing a Patreon date night. Right. Yeah. That's a cute idea. Isn't that so sweet? I feel like we're going to have a lot else? more fun stuff coming up on Patreon. Yeah, we are. And I have to tell the people because someone had a beautiful idea to <laughs> do like a classic TMB unpacking, but instead of us, it's like alternate reality. It's Aaron and Zoe. And right. Gabby and I were laughing so hard because we're like, the reality of that episode would be that Zoe is the star of the show and Aaron would just be like sitting there twiddling his thumbs. Like, not just like, not <laughs> just like nodding politely. <laughs> well, Zoe's like, when I was five. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> He's like, it all started on a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His Leo rising would pop oh, right through. Oh, yeah. It was making me laugh so hard. So I can't even tell we'll him that that's going to be a thing. But I can't tell him that someone asked because he like, like all of a sudden my computer passwords are changed it's him on here like yeah be but honestly you might have to because then maybe it'll help motivate this one a little bit more yeah we'll get them to do it together it can't be them too we God, need to moderate so no we'd have to moderate that would just they would be unhinged on their own more than we would be wow watch them like we're treating them like they're five watch them do like a spectacular job if we just leave them they to should their start choices. their own called like you know feelings Boyfriends of thoughts or whatever maybe. yeah exactly <laughs> their own pod Boyfriends may vary. <laughs> Boyfriends may vary. <laughs> Installment number one of like, what yes, are those shows fiance, called? Spinoffs. Our first spinoff. Spinoff. That would be cute. By the way, yeah. I am re-watching Sex in the City while I'm waiting for Just Like That to come out. And so I put my engagement ring that I still need to size on a necklace. So it's closer to my heart that way. Cute. Very Carrie Bradshaw inspired and I'm kind of loving it. Mm -hmm. I like that for you. You seem Shows, so unenthused. Well, no, 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 because I was going to tell else. you. No, because I was going to tell you, like, and you were in my head. I'm like, Meadow's going to be like, it shows our age difference. Because for me, I'm like, yeah, it reminds me of Blair and Chuck and Gossip Girl. Because they do that. I did watch Gossip Girl, but I don't remember. I like that idea. Because the later you give seasons your little finger like, a rest. Dude, it's still red. It's like perpetually it's, red, bruised from. It's fine. We're going to get it sized. I say we, right. like I'm involved. I am. You are involved. You're intimately involved. Yes. We're going to get it sized. I also saw some more wedding pictures that I think would be really up your alley that I'll send to you. Please do. I need to deck it's that. Very nice. I also ASMR, have updates. Noise. Oh, is it? <gasps> should I film ASMR for Patreon? You should do it for TikTok. Really? Wait, I'm like okay. going to fall asleep. This sounds great. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. This was fun. Like Bye. That? Ready? It's dripping. Yeah, it dripped all over me. I already like, spilled all over stain. my first shirt today. It just yeah, spilled on my sock. It's fine. But the Dawn soap works. Go to a Meadows Instagram for fun tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> what are you unpacking? Harsh segue. Yeah. Let's just I have get a couple to it. of things. Do you want to go first? Ooh, no, I'd rather have you go first. Oh, okay. First one is not that deep. It was just something I was proud of myself for. Oh, I love that. Because as you guys know, if you've been listening to the last few episodes, we've been talking a lot about creative ruts. And yeah. I recently found myself really coming out of one and feeling re-energized and ready to go and create. Love it. Soon after I took on a client, this client, I was really excited about working with. I still am excited about working with them. But the pressure felt on because mm. they're a big deal. They've done a lot of things that I really admire. And the creative director I'm working with is like a beast in his own right. So I was very much like, I got to perform. Mm -hmm. I did my first round for them. And I finished this round, it like flowed through me. So all the creative rut stuff that we talked about in the episode really worked for me where I just like really let myself brainstorm. I was like jotting down all of these becoming just like a human thesaurus, really writing Pause. things down in a journal. Hmm. Can we talk through that super granularly? Because if this is the thing that I think you gave me a little hint on, it was so well done. It was insane. And I saw the way you were kind of doing that. And it was very much inspiring to me. So 
Mm. Were you going to your notebook thinking, okay, here's the brand mission, vision values. Here's like everything I connect with it. Like walk me through the exercises you did for yourself. Well, what I was, I think it's important then to say like what the project is. I was helping the brand come up with they already had their mission statement, but it was just, they're, they're doing a, a very big like rebrand language refresh. Mm -hmm. So I was just mm -hmm. helping them come up with like their brand story, their brand proposition, like their offerings, all that sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. the creative director and I had already talked through specific themes and words that he found value in, but that like okay. he liked, but like didn't actually like the word. And it was kind of like reinvent yeah. the wheel type of combo. Yeah. I went step by step. Like I didn't try and write them all at once. I went yeah. and broke down each one. And yes, I sat with like those themes and what the, the why of each section was supposed to mm. hit. And then like worked with those words and tried to find creative new words that didn't sound like too cool kid or like too obnoxious mm -hmm. or like you use a thesaurus, but like also sounded very artful and quippy. Are you listening to time. music? Are you outside? Oh, no. It's free flowing in a notebook. I was You're literally just free flowing in a notebook, right. pen to paper, yeah. like yeah. at my dining table. Like I was inside cool. just doing that because I wanted to give myself, I wanted to be near my computer because if yeah, I, I wanted sure. to start typing, I needed to do that. So I did that mm -hmm. first. Then I started kind of writing out sentences, which I've never really done before, like on a notebook. Because mm -hmm. typically when I'm writing, like when I start writing out phrases, even if they're random, like it's on a Google Doc. This was like kind of in my notebook. Yeah. Then I moved cool. to Google Doc and started doing cool. it there. The intentionality showed through. Well, listen, so here's the point. I did all this work and it really flowed out of me really easily. I texted Meadow. I was like, I just finished this a lot faster than I thought I was going to. Like, I'm really proud of myself. Like, I think I'm really good at this. Like, I feel really, it just, it flowed, whatever. It felt great. I felt so good about it. And I remember that night going to sleep after sending in my first draft being like, look, if they hate it, then at least I know that like the flow is there mm -hmm. and then we can like edit and you know, whatever. But I really was like, oh, I got it. Like I got it. Woke up the next morning with basically an email that was like, what is this? <laughs> and I was like, oh, noted. To be fair, to be fair, we got on a call pretty immediately and the tone on the email versus the call, very different. The call was yeah. like, we're almost there. We just need to like work through a couple of things, which was expected of with course. this client and also expected with like the amount of rounds that I was giving them. But it was just so funny to me that like, I was so sure that I had like knocked it out of the park and they were like, no. On top of it, normally in that situation, when I get any sort of like creative feedback, it kind of hits in a certain way. Mm -hmm. This like, just, I didn't care. Like not because I didn't care about doing a good job because then I'd like sat down and redid no, it's it, not but personal. I didn't, I wasn't, yeah, it wasn't yeah. personal. I already kind yeah. of knew that this client was complicated. I already yeah. knew that like it was going to take a little bit to get there, but I was really proud of myself that I just like kept it pushing. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Do you feel you know? like, do you feel like that was indicative of it kind of like not being your baby or not a brand that you were invested? Like, what do you, what are all the factors? Yeah. Was it your own work? Had you meditated that day? Like, what were all the factors? I honestly, I had been meditating actually, because I was getting really bad anxiety last week. I was, I'm in my luteal phase and the beginning of my luteal phase yeah. has really been kicking my ass. So I was waking up like crying <laughs> for the mm -hmm. past week and just not doing great. So I was actually meditating more that week and just feeling much more like in my power when it came to that type of creativity but also I do think that I just like I'm not attached it's not my baby like I'm doing a job for somebody and I care and I want to do a good job but like I can take the feed it's not like personal. where's the pillow like said, not my really circus not, not my monkeys it's not personal yeah yeah it's not personal cool anyway oh I'm so proud of, of you thanks that's great okay what was your second one? Oh, okay the second one was the apartment uh, situation yeah so Let's talk through it. I love Zillow. I'm looking <laughs> on Zillow all of the time. We all know. <laughs> I'm in no rush to move. I have not honestly That's the like the best time to look. Be pleasantly yeah. surprised if you are, but no pressure. Right. Like I'm in no rush to move. I love my apartment. I would love a little bit of like a more walkable mm -hmm. area. And that's to say that I don't like I don't not live in a walkable area. I just like want to walk outside and have like a cute ass street. You kind of do. Whereas, but I live 
three blocks away from yes. the cute ass area that I like right. to walk around anyway. Right. So like with like, and that high street is like my favorite place ever. So like, yeah. I am so, like, I'm just being dra- like, I'm being dramatic about it. But anyway, I was looking online and I, a friend of mine, I had mentioned to her because we were working together that day that I was thinking about like this particular area that she lives in. And I was like, I just feel like it's a little bit more quiet, chill, but like still really cute. And she ended up finding an apartment within like seconds of that course. is on her dream street where her dream house is on, where she walks her dogs. And it was a duplex that was the only apartment on the entire street. I mean, you're just like surrounded by these beautiful homes. Yeah. And it was, we went to immediately go see it the next day, Zoe and I, it was like a dream. I mean, the apartment was, I mean, James Dean lived in the fucking 1950s. It's it had the cutest little elements to it. it had like one of those like old diet coke um, yeah that was cute bottle cap openers like screwed yeah. into one of the cabinets in the kitchen but it was it's Built rare to farm. find i mean it's so rare to find in la for that price yeah and that size yeah that much charm but totally like all of the appliances and everything were completely updated so like it wasn't like an old like musty yeah. place it was like totally upkept it was great there were a few major like big deal breakers that i was really trying to push past mm-hmm. i sat with it for like two days because obviously like these things like move fast i tried to really like tap in to the energy that i was feeling mm-hmm. because every time i have moved into an apartment other than the one that i'm in now and this is the only apartment that i've stayed this long in because normally mm-hmm. i'm like out after a year Every single apartment, I've been in a rush to find it. And the moment that I find the space, I'm like panicking, like immediately getting in my application. It's like this anxious, like I have to do it now. Someone's going to take it. It's like, there's so much anxiety around it. And every single time I've moved in and been like, why the fuck did I move in here? Not because like the unit wasn't great, but like I hated the neighborhood or like it was loud or like things that if I would have just taken a beat, I would have probably caught on to Mm -hmm. or like done a little bit more due diligence. I really had. Lacey Phillips and yep. Jessica from Gil. TBM. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica Gill in my head from TBM. They had a whole podcast episode about pings and yep. understanding your pings and if they're anxious pings or they're like what's meant for you mm-hmm. type of pings. And this was a total, like the underlying feeling was so anxiety driven. It was like this like rush icky feeling. It honestly like wasn't even, it was really like, to be honest, the neighborhood was perfect. Like the neighborhood really was perfect. Yeah. Other than like some things that I'm like genuine, like I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to like leave how central I am in LA. Like yeah, I'm still fair. new here, you know? So aside from the fact that I don't even know if I'm like ready for that type of move, I don't know. Like I think a lot of it was driven by what I think my friends would want me to live in or like my friends would like their themselves to live in. I feel like I love a charm filled space. But me more than the rest of you guys are is like way more like I'd rather have like security in the building. I'd rather have like totally a maintenance. Like I am fine totally. living in a little bit more of like a stale environment and like decorating it in the way that I want to like have those random comforts that someone yeah. who puts a little bit more effort into that type of shit like doesn't care. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Totally. Totally. I, I don't think I'm ready to give that up. Like I don't yeah. think I'm ready to give up like the amenities that come with where I live. Yeah. Fair. And I think I had it in my head because I was like. It's so much cuter. It's so much more Instagrammable. It's so much more like, oh my God, my friends would love it. Like they, you know, like I had all of that. Your best friends are me and Maddie. All we care about are your Libra bitches about charm and quaintness. Like we, (laughs) it absolutely makes sense that we would be like, no, it's perfect. Look how cute it is. Fuck the rest of it. I mean, it it was. (laughs) It was, but then I knew myself and I walked yeah. through every fucking scenario that, ha- yeah. that all of those red flags brought up and I'd be like, I'd be pissed. Oh, and I those were, felt like, I know we can't share all the red flags and those were very decent red flags to that you should not have thank compromised you. on. But also Absolutely. like I grew up in a house like that, like old mm-hmm. landmark home, which is mm-hmm. gorgeous. And I love that style of house. And I would live in a house like that. The reason I didn't want to live in a duplex like that is because it was original wood. Like you hear everything. And I was going to be on the second floor. There was a family under, like, I don't want to be disruptive. They have a kid. Like, yeah, I don't want to feel like I'm walking on eggshells in my own space. I want to be able to like smoke weed, you know, in my apartment. You know what I mean? Yes. So one day when we get a house, it can be cute and charm filled. Now 
I'm fine here. But anyway, I wanted to share that I was like really, to... yeah, yeah, leaning no, into the actually paying attention to like where the drive was coming from and like being realistic about what I actually wanted and also okay. having faith that when the time does come, I won't have to compromise in that way. Absolutely. And I think that's one thing mm -hmm. I said to you too, was like, this just shows you that like part of what you want is available and like what you want with every single expander. box trick will be too. Yeah, exactly. It's a house mm -hmm. expander. Yeah. Oh, fun, oh God, it was a good apartment. It was a yeah, good apartment. Someone will it love it. Really cute. And it'll Someone be perfect for them. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Oh God. You get that apartment. And your perfect one is on its way. Yeah. I think that's really interesting though, because this is not frankly what I was going to share about my unpacking, but I'll share a little bit because it just was brought up last night. I was, I'm like so behind on the TBM magnetic challenge, but so I'm on the <sighs> week too. about self-care and outsource or self-care mm -hmm. about self-worth and outsourcing your self-worth. And it was really interesting because I found that a lot of the things that I really want that are authentically based in my core mm -hmm. wants and values are also tied up with the fact that I want them on a quicker timeline in order to conform to a societal accepted timeline. So it's like, I know I'll get those things. I know those things are meant for me, but mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of my peers have those now when I don't. And so I feel yeah. pressure to get these things. So it's this very weird thing. I, I just appreciate so much you talking about like compartmentalizing out the pings of anxiety versus what's for you versus mm -hmm. what your friends want, because it's, it's hard when so much of it is really authentic. And like when you're up leveling mm -hmm. and getting closer and closer to that, it becomes so much harder to weed out because you're like, well, it's grounded in my actual authentic wants, but the timeline is what I'm rushing or the, or the presentation of how it looks right now or whatever mm -hmm. other factors, like it just gets a lot stickier to parcel out as you move up those ladders of getting to know yourself. Oh yeah. Oh, it, it really, really does. does. What are you unpacking? Okay. Is that like part of it? No, not at all. It's completely different. But it was a separate one. <laughs> I'm rereading my note to make sure that I get everything that I want. But I had two stories that I hadn't told you about, too. And it's interesting because this also is reflective of a question that we got. OK, mm. so I'm back on my grief shit, obviously, because some people know mm -hmm. that I've shared that one side of my family has been experiencing a lot of grief. And frankly, the logistics that come with grief is something we don't talk mm -hmm. about. That is also no. really, really hard to deal with when you're still grieving. And then you're like canceling yep. their phone plan and making sure the will is notarized and inheriting property and whatever it may be. But so with grief and with life and with everything, I am on my Ram Dass shit of learning to keep my heart open in hell, mm -hmm. which is a phrase that he says about how mm -hmm. kind of like accepting that, like, the hardest things in life are also a part of life. And that's also okay. And that also makes it beautiful. You know, that pronounced side of it. It's like a very hard, mm -hmm. heady thing to get your, to go into. But so I was thinking, I've been thinking about that a lot and like trying to do that a lot and then realizing how fucking sensitive it makes me. And there's two really funny examples. One, I was driving home from LA recently and I was parked, I was at our friend Dana's house and I was out front. So I was parked under a tree and I get onto the freeway. There are some leaves, you know, whatever. I get onto the freeway and there was a caterpillar attached to my windshield wiper and part of it was like flowing and the other part was holding on and I literally Gabriella started sobbing in my car and was like Did you pull on. over <laughs> no and I didn't pull over because I was like I was already stuck You're in the traffic highway. and the drive was You're so long highway. and I was on the highway and I was like all the way in the left hand lane You're when like, I noticed sorry, little guy and I literally was like saying the whole Pono Prono prayer and like crying and trying to be like please hold on driving and then oh my god it was so awful and my heart was hurting so badly and then it like there would be traffic so we'd stop and he'd get a break and I'm like go under go he'd under. get a break <laughs> so at one point he like went under the windshield and I just thought okay I have to release it like thank god he's in my head he's going under we're doing what we can and then I just forced myself to not look the rest of the time because I was so upset and then like two days later we we caught a mouse in the house recently. Did I even tell you that? No. Ugh. Yeah, it was really gross. You could How tell because Mahal. I mean, was I like, guess a mouse is better than a rat. It was probably a rat. I mean, I didn't even look. Okay. Aaron dealt with the whole thing. I didn't even look. I'm calling it a mouse because yeah. it's cute. It for sure was a rat. Mahal right, was, it was like ratatouille. hooked. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She was hooked to one side of the kitchen and was like growling under the cabinet. So you could tell. Whatever. We caught one. When trying to get rid of it, he had sticky traps, which I don't think we caught it in a sticky trap, but we had sticky traps. 
and we were clearing out that back room and I put a sticky trap on the ground outside so Mahal couldn't get to it because our our door has mm-hmm. like a couple steps to it and I was doing different things and a huge lizard got stuck in the sticky trap and I fucking lost my shit again I was like talking don't well, laugh yeah, at me you can't He's rip that shit it's gone it's, it's gone and I sorry my buddy mom and Aaron were there and I I they both did that very quickly and I could I was like I can't I felt so bad I thought about him for three days <sighs> I had to do the whole point of prayer like my I'm so fucking sensitive to this shit now that it's like so hard but it also like it was it was remembering that as far oh, and as spiritual as I try to go with this shit like we are humans having human experiences and things die yeah. and dogs catch rats and like poverty exists and fucking unhoused people are going through a hurricane with zero resources that are made available to them and like how do you keep your heart open in hell and accept that this is all part of it and mm. also be willing to accept that it's all part of it and not cry over the caterpillar. Did you cry you about can't. things like that when you were little in that way? Like, were you someone who like wouldn't kill a bug? Oh yeah. I still don't. I trapped the spiders. My dad always put the glass on the piece of paper and then you take them outside and you let them go. No, no, no. Fine, he also saved like bees a, from like the a mosquito. pool. Mm, he would bees. save bees from the pool and then say that they would remember his scent and that's why he wouldn't get stung. So yeah, I was raised by a dad that did that. So I absolutely do that. I'm just a sensitive little mm. human being. And I'm trying to keep my heart open and I'm trying to also know that that's just being fucking human. We're on this earth having an earthly experience. Like things are going to die. And sometimes they're at my hands and that sucks. And that's part of it. It's such a complex thing to sit with. You're really right. Like it, it's. Isn't it? uh, Because it only gets worse. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is exactly like it only point. gets worse. It only gets worse. And someone asked us recently because you and I in a previous episode spoke to getting through really hard life situations because you and I have the same fundamental belief that other people can make up their own, but we have the fundamental belief that like love exists in the universe. And if people leave, mm-hmm. you'll still find them and everything happens for us to become a, di- a version of ourselves that we needed, even when it's hard. Mm-hmm. And someone else was saying like, yeah, but at what point do, do you experience things or go through things? And like that thought isn't helpful. Yeah. And I think this is where I play with that line of like, yeah, as spiritual as you get right now, I'm not on the other side. I am on earth having the human experience. So like, when do you have to just fucking let that shit go? And like, maybe there's not the lesson right away in this, or maybe like, that's not a helpful narrative to have for yourself. And it's just a very, it's a very sticky thing to play with. But no, it's sticky. A, sticky. <laughs> <laughs> she brought it back full circle. She oh, brought it back full circle. Right now. That can be applied to so many things. Because we were just having the episode isn't out yet. I don't think it'll be out by the time this comes out. But we just, spoiler alert, Lexi Lombard is coming on the podcast. Mm. Yay. And we talked about that in hers. We were talking about it in, through the lens yeah. of money and yeah. Yeah. finances. How at the end of the day, like we are, regardless of what we feel about the society that we're living in, we are currently living in that society. So Mm -hmm. yes, we can do the things every day to make sure that this place is better when we are gone and leave it better Mm -hmm. than when we got here. But that's like pretty much all you can do is like that and just try to make it through. And the best part of the human experience is living within your fucking human experience. Like Mm -hmm. This is so unique and goes by so much faster than we know that like you got to absorb it for all it's worth kind of. You have to absorb it. Uh, Wow. I can't speak now. You stumbled and now I stumbled on the same one that you stumbled. There we go. Absorb. It's hard to absorb. It is. It's, it's weird to think about like how quickly life just goes by. It's nuts. But how gorgeous every singular moment is when you think about it, because it is so you. It, it's it's a fun thing to think about about how unique all of our singular moments are, but how not unique unifying. they are. No, and we how all have the exact are. experience. Yeah, it's just it's like so different cool. font, same shit, totally. different font. Totally, it's so cool. Which is also why I always go back to like Ram Dass, especially over like Eckhart Tolle or Deepak Chopra. Mm-hmm. No shade, because he he was just so much more willing to like live in that human experience, and even the fact that he would make jokes about. If you say, hey, Richard, he'd be like, oh, hey, what's up? And if you say, hey, Ramdas, he's like, hello. Like, it's all drag. 
-hmm. like even the spiritual aspect, like I think that's such a big spiritual bypassing element of it too, to be like holier than thou. And we're like, no, you're supposed to do the work to come back to community. You're supposed to like explore these concepts to come back to earth and figure out in reality, how do we move through this? Mm -hmm. And you know who really helps me with that concept? Fucking that one. Cause I'm so airy and up in the clouds. Y'all both really help ground me back into like applying those concepts and bringing them into tangible action here. I saw a Jay Shetty clip recently that was really beautiful. And he was talking about that concept, but in terms of relationships. And he was saying Mm. that essentially the most meaningful, like loving relationships and the ones that last are when your relationship becomes something that is not about either one of you. And it becomes about how you can serve together. And I thought it was really beautifully said because I I think it's so true. Like if you're going to have a partnership, whether you believe in marriage or you don't or whatever, but if Mm -hmm. you're going to have this long-term partnership and you're going to build a life, how beautiful is it that you get to combine your two minds and your two Mm -hmm. souls and your gifts to then leave this world better. Yeah. And pass it on and create something outside of yourselves. And it can oh be God, through the children that you, yeah, I was going to say it can be yeah. through your children <laughs> or through yeah. your service or like, I always love yeah. hearing parents talk about like raising. I know it's a funny, like clinical, it's not a clinical word, but it's just like a very a funny word when you're talking about kids. But I always love it when I hear parents say that they're trying to raise well-adjusted humans. Like oh, the word funny. well-adjusted is funny to me, but it is, is so funny. true. Yeah. It's so like, true. that's just the goal, like healthy, well-adjusted kids. It's a, that's what I think parents get tripped up on, especially in that whole, I mean, like if you're on the parenting TikTok and you see, you're not supposed to say, watch out or don't do that. You're supposed to say like, that looks slippery. Like what is your brain telling you to do next? So like mm-hmm. the whole goal of parenting is to like give the next generation, all the tools that you've learned to how to survive in this plane. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait for us to be able to talk about parenting styles when we're actually parents, because I have so I many thoughts on like, obviously the way that we are raised, obviously like, oh God. and then, but then also like, there is so much, and I am not a parent. So please take this with a grain of salt, like bullshit about like gentle parenting on TikTok. And oh, there, I, there's this one creator, I don't know, I can't remember the name, I've definitely sent you their videos. And I really okay. like how they talk about parenting. And maybe I will feel totally differently when I have a child. So please, again, we're just shooting the shit here. But I, like the way that she talks about parenting is so interesting, because it is, it is gentle parenting. And it is that but she's like, allowing her children to feel and learn Mm -hmm. for themselves and giving them the tools and like giving them space and approaching it in such a different way that like our parents' generation, our grandparents' generation Mm -hmm. weren't primed to like do with us at all. But it's, but it's so much more like it's, it, it hasn't swung in that complete direction of like, you go deep, deep, deep into what can be like misconstrued and people labeling gentle parenting. That's not like what it was actually created for. If it's not useful to the combo, we'll edit that out. But I kind of think even hashing that out is kind of useful. Mm-hmm. Kind of interesting. Depends. We'll, we'll hear. Depends. I got <laughs> to go. know what that exchange. What? Yeah, you do got to go. No, tell really me. quick before we end, it reminded me of the scene in Bridesmaids where they're going back and forth. I think it's about like the bridesmaids' dresses or God knows what. And she's like, "No, I think it's this." And the other one's like, "No, I think it's I think it's that." And she's like, "No." <laughs> I think it's this. We just keep <laughs> like that's like you oh, and I going back and forth. Yeah, like I think it's useful. Pretty. I'm like I don't know. Yeah. It's the most useful conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally. Are you going hard out at um, five? I'm going to go talk to Doctor Zand about doing my at home ketamine treatment therapy. <gasps> Everyone, go listen to that episode. She's got a heart out, which I really need it. Yes. Love you. Thanks for listening. Love you. Thanks for listening. Ciao. Bye. How's it going, y'all? It's Aaron. Don't let your Monday suck. Don't have those Sunday scaries. I'm tired of everybody waking up in the week saying, ah, shit, it's Monday. You know what goes down? TMV releases every week on Mondays. Make sure you rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're watching YouTube, yes, TMV has a YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and ring that noti bell.
and never miss a thing. And also, join the TMV Familia by joining the Thoughts May Vary Patreon and by following at Thoughts May Vary Pod on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you for listening. Great. There you go. Thanks, Aideen. Gotcha.